I'd like to welcome everybody today to this fourth Sunday in Easter to our worship service here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ. As always, may you receive a blessing from our worship together. And to know one day soon, hopefully, we will all be together. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, let us gather together with glad and generous hearts, for many signs and wonders are being done among us. Let us break bread together and share our lives in common. Let us give what we can to all who have need so that people, no matter who they are, may regard us with goodwill. Let us devote ourselves to our prayers and to the gospel, for in this way God will add to our numbers every day. Will you join me in prayer, please? Good Shepherd, you call us by name, and we know your voice. Open the gate for us that we may come and go freely, have life, and have it abundantly. Amen. <laughs>
near to all who call upon him in truth. Let us pray. Shepherding God in a dangerous world, let us hear your voice and come and go through your gate. We pray for the whole church that we may be devoted to your word and to universal fellowship, being generous to all who have need. We pray for the earth, for green pastures and still waters, that we may restore them to the goodness and purity that they had at the time that you created them. We pray for the people of the world, their nations and leaders, that your wisdom and peace may govern all so that no one will fear. We pray for all those in need, for those in want, those ill and those dying that we may be the banquet that you set before them as we anoint them, feed them, and comfort them in your name. We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. May no one live in fear. May all dwell in your presence. Blessed are you, great shepherd, who through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit gives us goodness and mercy, leads us down right paths, and restores our souls. 
Amen. Dear friends, our God has prepared a table before us and our cup overflows. So let us give generously from our common wealth as a way of praising God and giving to those in need. Will you pray together with me? Holy and generous God, you have anointed us and we are yours. Bless these tithes and offerings that they may become green pastures and still waters for any and all who need your comfort and restoration. Amen. First scripture lesson for today is a very, very familiar one. Psalm 23 a psalm that we are mostly used to hearing at times of illness and most certainly at death. Hopefully during this sermon today, we will be able to see and hear with different eyes and ears to this most familiar of psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, you comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And the second reading today is from the Gospel of John in chapter 10. As a matter of fact, on the fourth Sunday of Easter every year, we read from chapter 10. And uh, I'll cheat. This is called the Good Shepherd chapter. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way as a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. 
Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to destroy and kill and steal. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Here endeth the scripture lesson for this Sunday. May God add his blessing to our understanding. Amen. If I tell you now that it is Good Shepherd Sunday, I bet everybody's figured that out since all the lessons are there. As a matter of fact, there's a whole lot of shepherds and sheep throughout the scripture. When King David is called to be anointed to be king, what's he doing? He's out in his father's field tending the flocks. And then, of course, there is Psalm 23, probably the one most people know about shepherds and sheep, and certainly the most beloved image in the Old Testament. Sheep don't get lost in the New Testament either. Remember where the shepherds are when the angels come and scare the bejeebers out of them? They're in a field, tending their flocks by night. And of course, there is chapter 10 in John. The whole chapter is about Jesus as shepherd and about his sheep. That image, that metaphor for God and the people, for king and the people, has held on for over 2,000 years. And it remains essential to how we understand ourselves as Christians and how we understand God in our lives. We learn lots from these shepherds and their sheep. And yes, those dear, darling sheep, especially the lambs. When I was in Ireland, I got to feed a little lamb with a bottle. It was grand, but they wouldn't let me bring it home. I was sad. But those lovely, darling sheep are not the smartest thing God has ever put on this earth. As a matter of fact, they are wanderers. If they are not in a pen, they wander. They pay no attention to anything but the next bite of food. And they end up in horrible, dangerous situations, unable to find any water, unable to find new pastures. They are on their own. Good thing sheep are cute. Except, of course, that isn't all they are. They're worth quite a deal, quite a bit. Food, milk, wool, always in history. So humans have put up with them. If sheep are not the smartest things God has put on the earth, then that means they have to be watched. They have to be cared for. Somebody has to keep track of them all the time. They had to be led to food, to water, and made to rest when it was necessary. So what do you do for that? You get a shepherd, of course. The shepherd's presence was essential, not only to the life and flourishing of the herd, but sheep, wherever they have been raised, are worth a great deal, and they need to be protected so they can add to the economy of the place. 
Any wonder that this metaphor has become crucial in our understanding of God's and God's people? Just a little hint. We're the sheep. Psalm 23, and I said I hope we can look at it a little bit differently. When we hear the psalm, we think of the valley of the shadow of death and that they will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I think I have probably only done a handful of services that somebody in a family has not asked for the 23rd Psalm to be read. As a matter of fact, I did a funeral last week for a dear, dear woman. That was the first thing requested, Psalm 23. What's interesting though about Psalm 23 is it is not about death. As a matter of fact, it's about a lot of good stuff that goes on right now in our lives. Green pastures, still waters, the restoration of our souls are all promises that God makes to us now. These are not things that await us when we are after death somewhere. They are promised to us now. Of course, we have to let the shepherd take us there, don't we? The psalm also is very clear that bad things do happen to good people. As a matter of fact, bad things happen to bad people too, but that's another sermon. What the psalm declares is that even when those bad things happen, we are not alone. We do not travel alone. God is in the battle with us. The psalmist says, even if we were in a room surrounded with our enemies, I like to think of it as the worst life has to offer, God's table remains set, always. There is enough food for everyone, and the cup runneth over. From God there is always the promise of abundance in our lives. And what does the psalmist tell us follows us through our lives? Goodness and mercy. I think that's pretty great. We are not chased by our fears or our anxieties, especially if we allow God to be our shepherd. No goodness and mercy. And thank heavens, there are no evictions from us dwelling with God. We can also be assured by these words in John because they add to our understanding from Psalm 23. John says in many ways that the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is an assurance, is a promise that the relationship with God continues. If maybe the people thought that God had gone back on them or the promise was broken, God in Christ assures them it is not. Again, that's pretty great news. But, there's always a but. There are a couple things we need to understand about this shepherd-sheep relationships before we 
take off and wander in those pastures and drink that clear water. A shepherd and a shepherd's sheep have always worked this way. The shepherd is primary. I like to say at my house, the shepherd is the boss. Not that I'm the boss, but the shepherd is the boss. And sheep, sheep are dependent. We don't like that word, especially now when so many of us feel like we are out of control and people are bossing us and telling us what to do and we want to get out there and, I guess, head for the beach or get our hair cut. But we are dependent on the shepherd for life. God makes possible life that we cannot find for ourselves. Left alone in that field, trust me, most of us are going to go over a cliff sooner or later. And sheep do, go, do not go out and find their own shepherd. We're not putting any ads in the paper. We don't get to say how the shepherd is to be. The shepherd finds us. Always. It is what God said. And finally, we do not know Christ because we are bright or holy, but because God is gracious in revealing the Good Shepherd to us. This is nothing we do ourselves, but as all things in Scripture, God is the beginning and the end. There is not one of us who has not gotten lost and has to be found, sometimes on a daily basis. We all fail to live or to be satisfied to live in those green pastures and still waters. We want more. We want greener grass. We want bigger water never satisfied with what we have been given. We still think we can take care of it all. We don't need no shepherd. But we do, really. Luckily, the psalm tells us the Lord is our shepherd. Amen.
In Luke's Gospel, we read that Jesus at the table with two of the disciples took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. In the Acts of the Apostles, we read that as the church was gathered, often in the homes of believers, Christians devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and community to the breaking of bread and to prayers. Jesus Christ, the bread of life, we gather at your table to know you in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and the gift of life and for your abiding love, which brings us close to you, the source of all blessing. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those whom Jesus loved. We rejoice that in a perfect victory over the grave, you raise Christ with power to become your sovereign, to become sovereign in your will. We welcome the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church, by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. With the faithful in every place and time, we praise with joy your holy name. Amen. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us pray together. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our love for one another. Let us show forth your praise in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, devote yourselves to the teaching of the gospel, to your prayers, and our Christian fellowship day by day for they will lead you to a glad and generous heart. Please remember that it is still Easter, so that means once again, whether here or at home, we have to go. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And now may the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you.